Hi Gary, I believe you're a massive Ford fan and have been for 50 years. So please keep supporting the brand and keep supporting the team out there. And uh, all I would like to say is enjoy the rally and it's fantastic to have Kenya back in the championship. Take care. Jeff, you're a massive part of this rally. You've helped with the organisation and build up of it over these years. What does this event mean to you? To me personally, it's enormous. As a kid growing up here in Africa, every Easter we would descend. All the Zimbabweans would literally take over an aeroplane and descend on Kenya. Uh, we used to work with the organisers here. We used to send our competitors up here to rally here. Um, to now be involved in the rally on its WRC return, for me, is, is especially poignant. Very emotional, actually. Uh, on Friday morning, when the Chewy Lodge stage went live, I genuinely had tears in my eyes. Look, I've, I've just interviewed all the drivers in the, uh, in the, in the, the last media zone. I very specifically asked them, what did they think of the rally? What did they think of Kenya? Each and every one of them has totally endorsed this difficult, tough, tortuous, murderous event that, that took out half the cars. They've all categorically endorsed it. I am amazed and delighted by that. But how does that make you feel? No, look, it's fantastic. You know, the whole world has been very skeptical of the return of WRC to, to Kenya and the safari. You know, a lot of people questioned, was this event deserving of the name Safari Rally? I like to think the last three days have proved emphatically that, yes, it is still deserving of it. What people need to remember is times change. Monte Carlo is not what it was 30 years ago. Corsica is not what it was 40 years ago. Safari Rally is not what it was, and that's because it can't be anymore. Um, but you know what? It's still tough. It's still Africa. It very much as I, I described it as the character of the rally has completely changed. It bears very little resemblance to the rally of old, but the ingredients are identical in a condensed and concentrated form. Do you agree with that? Oh, 100%. How do we make it just a little bit tougher for next year? Sebastian Ogier, the winner, has asked for it to be a little bit tougher. I've got some ideas. I'm going to share them. Good evening, Patrick. Good evening, Rikas and Nico. Good evening, Coach. Hi, Colin. How are you? Yes, Glenn. Very good evening. I am super. Thank you. Really, really delighted to be part of your show this evening. Excellent. Thanks. Thank you to everybody for making time and joining us tonight. Um, Patrick seems extremely cozy there. So um, <laughs> we were sitting in Cape Town and it seems like I'm the brave one. Um, maybe just for the benefit of the audience, um, Nicole, where are you based? Rikas and Colin, where are you guys sitting tonight? Well, I'm, I'm based up in uh, Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, it's pretty cold here tonight, too. <laughs> okay, no, perfect. And, and Rikas uh, and Colin? Yeah, yeah, I'm based in uh, Port Elizabeth, South Africa. And uh, yeah, also having a nice chilly evening here. And uh, nice to be on the show. Okay, super. Well, I tell you what, I'm jealous, guys. I really am. You're all, all staying in these wonderful, exotic places. I'm uh, very close to Stoke-on-Trent in Staffordshire. Not quite so exotic, I'm afraid, but uh, just as lovely in its home. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's perfect. That's perfect. So um, we have another guest. Uh, he will be arriving a little bit later this evening. Um, he just came home now, but uh, we, I said to him, just, just drop in while we're having a chat. So let, let's get it started. Where are we starting? At the start of Safari 2021. It, it finally came and it feels like a dream that has gone past, like a snap of a finger. And um, let's start with Colin. Unfortunately, Colin could not attend the event. Colin, what was your thoughts about the event and how did, how did it make you feel? Because you a a rally god <laughs> and you you were not at the, at the safari rally yeah well do, do you know what I, I have been looking forward to the safari rally for such a very very long time i started in rallying working with a tobacco company um and we sponsored the subaru world rally team and i had the opportunity to go out to the safari rally in 2002 with subaru and i didn't take it then and you, I knew I'd regret it. I really did. I, Africa has absolutely captivated me since my very early days. I've read every single Wilbur Smith book there is. 
and, and you know i have this, this this lust for all things africa but things are difficult right now as, as we all know travel is difficult the uk government made it exceptionally difficult for us to come out so i had to enjoy the event from the uk and you know what i did enjoy it and i loved it i thought it would be so so difficult watching all those wonderful pictures listening to all those wonderful sounds and noises and people out there and cars obviously but i loved it i loved every single minute of watching it so can't wait can't wait to get a proper taste of african rallying perhaps at the end of this year the classic but certainly next year when the wrc returns it uh, it was an enormous success and it was enormously entertaining no no for sure for sure so i'm going to move over to nico quickly because um nico maybe just for the purposes of the audience also just give us um your your background um and you know you you um you in the in the wheelchair maybe just give us a description of of how you how your rally was and and what kind of what what's your thoughts and experiences uh well yeah i've, I've been um i've been i've been living in kenya for all my life um and safari rally has been such a big part of just our daily uh you know yearly uh, a yearly event that just happens and you know you're so happy it's uh it's an amazing experience uh but yeah my experience of my first wrc event ever um was was amazing i got to meet all these uh, world-class rally drivers and just to be part of part of what they do uh was was a crazy crazy experience and uh yeah, I can't wait for for it all to happen again next year. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, for sure. So, <clears throat> to Rikas, I've got the question: Who is Hendrik on the entry list? <laughs> I have. To, <laughs> how did that come about? <laughs> I like to go incognito mode. So no one expected me to arrive up, and when they saw it, it's me, it's like, what the hell is happening here? So yeah, I had to do an incognito move there to just in case COVID hit me hard and I couldn't pass it for some reason, then it's no big one. No, no one knew that Rikas is going to be there, you know. So that's part of the, the strategy. <laughs> but but how, how did you manage to get a seat? Because I don't think you were on the initial entry list. Um, what, no, what? I wasn't on, on the initial entry list. There was another navigator from Zimbabwe that was supposed to take the seat. Um, unfortunately, something happened uh, that... Okay. They needed to find a, a navigator in short notice. And uh, yeah, I got the phone call and I said, well, if you can fit me in the car, I'll do it. <laughs> no, 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 perfect. So, 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 so let's start. Let's start with uh, the Ricky run. The pictures that we saw and, and, and Rikas, you shared some pictures with us also. The, the fish fish and, and the terrain. Uh, was that a, 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 an awakening to say that you finally arrived on the safari or was it something that, that you guys were used to? Look, let's be clear. First of all, our Ricky car was a vacuum cleaner. A Mitsubishi <laughs> was a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> so once you eat that, that uh, fresh face dust, uh, it's unreal. I mean, we literally looked like we were rolling in the dust. When we climbed out the car, uh, the tension was a bit high. Our sense of humor was not, not the best it should be. But when we turned around and had a look at each other and saw ourselves covered in dust, we just cracked up laughing. Um, but yeah, the roads, uh, I was really surprised. The roads got cut up so badly during Rick already that we all thought, hell, what, what are we in for? Because you're eating stuff inside the fish fish, you don't see it, you just feel it. And you're like, man, oh man, this is going to be interesting. And it really was interesting. The Reiki itself was an experience, seeing animals just going through the past. It's a long day, a long day of doing notes. I'll tell you one thing, when everyone is sitting in the hotel rooms, having supper and dinners, uh, all the navigators were doing notes out there. So yeah, it was, it was quite a tough one. Okay. And, and, and Nicola, how did it go for you guys? Yeah, well, um, we've been driving on these stages for, uh, for a couple of years now. We, we did the ARC as well, and um, they were pretty much the same stages. We had a few uh, new stages, which was the Chewy Lodge and um, the Hell's Gate, uh, Osarian. But uh, all in all, we, we knew what we were getting into, um, especially with Kedong uh, and um, Sleeping Warrior, all these stages. But yeah, as Rick has said, after, after Reki, even we were quite surprised that we've done all this damage in our normal cars. When, when the works cars go through, they're just gonna <laughs> really, really give us some nice railway tracks. But yeah, and that's exactly what happened. It's crazy. Yeah, no, for sure. And and Colin, give us some perspective. What did the works teams got to say after the Reiki? Yeah, you know, 
yeah, after the recce, I, I I looked at those pictures that came out, and you know, it certainly got you excited as as, as a fan and as a commentator, <laughs> as a spectator. <laughs> I felt for you boys as drivers and navigators, particularly a little further down the field. I actually had a bet with David Evans that we would see more than one car stuck at the start of a stage because you know, <laughs> it was so soft and those ruts were so deep you could just, uh, you know, it was, it, was, it was part of the attraction of the event is we just didn't know. We didn't know how the roads would evolve and develop. We didn't know how the World Rally cars would, would cope with it. N never mind all the cars behind and, you know, you guys that were behind the R5 cars even, I, I can't imagine how much of a challenge it was, but from our point of view, watching and enjoying the competition, it was that element of unknown that made it really, really exciting. And and something different, something so, so different from anything we've seen in the past. Yeah. And, and it's similar to the Monte Carlo, in effect, because Monte Carlo is all about the surprise. Safari brought that. It was all about the surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I guess. That's an interesting comparison. Um, but it is. It's, it's about the, the changing surfaces and dealing with the changing surfaces and dealing with the unexpected. Um, you know, whether that's that's the surface, whether that's the weather, whether that's the wildlife. And we saw plenty of that, didn't we? So yeah. I, I just thought the, the, the all of the ingredients that went into it from, from the recce, you know, from the reception that the teams got to the recce experience, the rally itself, it, it was all just so wonderfully new and uplifting for everyone. It was it was the best thing that's happened genuinely to the championship for many, many years. Uh, that that is great to hear because when when I saw the pictures of, of the different teams arriving at the lodges and the the you know they were sitting with with wildlife and pictures it's like now nah, you in Africa <laughs> it's like that's the real thing it's not Photoshop right <laughs> but, but you know do you know what with, with the World Rally Championship what what happens is you know they call it a World Rally Championship and, and, I, and I guess in some ways it is you know we go to Australia New Zealand South America we go to Mexico and uh, you know these, these countries are uh, they, they, talk, they speak a different language but culturally they're all very similar you come to Africa and Africa is Africa and it's it's noisy and it's hot and it's dusty and it's different <laughs> and it was a slap in the face for a lot of these rally drivers it was like whoa hang on a minute what's this all about um, and it was it was just great to see them given a different challenge and having to embrace yeah. that challenge work with that challenge and overcome the challenge I, I you know as i say I, I, there's nothing there is genuinely nothing that i could fault from that event that i saw nothing that i would particularly change yeah it might have been nice to have seen a little bit more mud and water but you know i haven't heard anyone with, with any complaints really it was yeah. apart from maybe the traffic maybe the traffic it was like it was like pictures of Armageddon with all those cars <laughs> strewn everywhere. <laughs> it was it was I mean they were incredible pictures, but my goodness, I wouldn't have liked to be stuck in that traffic. But other than that, guys, it was ace. It was ace and we loved every minute. Yeah. So so let's talk about the Friday because I think the Friday was the not most controversial, but was was the game changer, right? You talk about the element of the unknown, you talk about drivers taking a different mindset, different perspective of attacking because the guys are used to 10 tens, right? And I think the, the guys that came out tops and basically survived the, the duration of the three days was the, the 18, 19 club, right? For Because you needed to preserve your tires because the sauce was, was the ideal one. Um, when the minute the, the rain hit, but we'll get to that. <laughs> but let's yeah. talk about Kidong. What what did Kidong hold? And and Rikas, I, I will I will start with you this time um, because on that Friday everybody just started to fall like flies. Well, to be honest, Kidong, I never actually managed to do the first run because the stage got uh, stopped. So, unfortunately, I never got to do it the first time around. Second time around, we got to do it. Uh, it wasn't so, so brilliant for us either because we were making good time, catching people ahead of us, and then we caught them, unfortunately, in the wrong place, in, in a fish fish section that's really overgrown. And we just couldn't see nothing. And at that moment, we lost momentum and got bogged down. It took us 10 minutes to get the car extracted. So, the unfortunate about the stages, it's, it's nice and flowing, but don't get caught up with other people. 
yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, that that was the look the the first stages, Chui Lodge and Osirian. I thought they were going to be brilliant stages after the Reiki, but <laughs> by the time he got there and saw how cut up it was, it was just unreal. We we were like gobsmacked, is this the same stage? Even the notes didn't work anymore. <laughs> sure. And and Nicole, from your perspective, how was it doing for you? Uh, or yeah, well, so at least. Yeah, for the Friday. I mean, we we were pretty much in the same situation as Rick. As we obviously the first time we went round, it, it was red flag, so we didn't we didn't get a chance to get in. Uh, and the second time round as well, there was um, there was a whole um, there was another car that rolled, and, and we got caught up with yeah, that. So we got red flag too. Yeah, yeah. So I we did manage to do two stages. Um, the Chui Lodge, unfortunately, the first time we went round. The car, two cars in front of me, the guy just rolled and blocked the whole stage. So we were rerouted to Kedong. Kedong had the red flag. And then we came into Osarian, which was uh, which was nothing as to what we did at Reiki that totally changed. Yeah. We went into a tree. We caught up with the car in front. We, <laughs> it was a 600 uh, caution medium right, and we couldn't see anything. And clearly it became a, a fast jump into just into a bushes. Yeah. So... It was uh we put in some good times but yeah friday was a real mess just just with all the events and all the, the cars that were being crashed out and the red flags and and all of that but uh kedong i mean we were i was looking forward to it obviously yeah. um i think i'm glad that it got cancelled in a way <laughs> a lot of people <laughs> did uh, did get caught out by that yeah yeah i tell you um, uh I, I, yeah. sorry uh, on the the one stage we did, uh, you mentioned going into a tree there. We got we got around this corner, and there's a complete exhaust system lying in the middle of the road. We go a few corners later, there's a complete drive shaft still with the balls intact. It was just carnage in there. You come around the corner, and you're like, "What the hell are these guys doing?" It was sometimes it's good to go in with a trailer. You just pick up parts as you're going along. <laughs> At the end of the round, you have a nice little shop and you're just selling parts. You're making some good money. <laughs> memorabilia. You're selling memorabilia. <laughs> there's, there's a funny story about that, guys. There's a funny story going back a few years. Uh, and it involved the Subaru World Rally Team and the Mitsubishi World Rally Team. I don't know if you boys remember, there was a massive crash on, I think it was one of the tests. It was, it was Tommy Mackinnon uh, and one of the Mitsubishis. They had a head-on crash. At a huge speed, which I thought was impossible yeah. out there, but it, but it happened. Uh, and I think it was during a test, or it might have been during the recce. Can't remember exactly. It wasn't during the rally, but the Subaru was completely written off, completely written off. So the guys at ProDrive, rather than you know spending the money to ship it back to the UK, they basically took it to a scrapyard. They cut it up. They left it in the scrapyard. The next year, they came back to Kenya, and there's this guy driving around with this welded up. Super World Rally car. Somebody <laughs> taking the park, genuinely taking the park. They got the base off an old Volkswagen Beetle and they rebuilt this car, the Super World Rally car, around this Volkswagen Beetle. So you know, it'll still be running around the streets of Nairobi. I'm not sure, but nowadays, nowadays, what we do, Super, is they take everything home with them. No matter what mess it's in, it goes home with them because they learn their lessons in Nairobi. <laughs> imagine, yeah. imagine how many of these cars would have been around Nairobi if they left him there. Because it was <laughs> absolutely, carnage, eh? it was absolute carnage. But yeah. uh, Colin, well, uh, when you guys started to see the the, the carnage in Kedong, uh, was the uh, teams that was giving team instruction to to tell the guys to slow down or to change tactics? Do, do you know what it was? It was the guys that really. The, the guys that survived were the clever drivers. They're all, they're all clever. None of them are not intelligent. But some of them yeah. are more intelligent than others. And some of them are more disciplined <laughs> than others. And it was the discipline. You know, Elvin Evans, yeah. one of the most intelligent guys out there, one of the yeah. more experienced drivers out there, but he didn't manage to lose that European mindset. And that European mindset is hit every single apex and get thousands, hundreds of a second from every apex. Cut, cut, cut. You, you just don't do that. You just don't do that in Africa. Because unless you know what's in that corner on the apex, if that apex is under a bush, don't go near it. Just don't go near it. Uh, and he did, and we all saw what happened. But the likes of Ogier and, and one or two others, they, they had the discipline. The discipline to uh, change their driving style a little bit, to adapt, to perhaps give away the odd tenths of seconds 
that they knew they would get it back in other places. And, and I don't think there were any particular instructions to the teams on Friday morning after or the drivers, after you know, what started to unfold. But I think the clever, intelligent drivers adapted themselves and they knew what the danger was. They knew what the possibilities were. Uh, and they were the guys that survived. And, and they're the ones that, that, that went on to claim the points at the end of the rally. That was the biggest challenge for the, for the drivers on Friday morning, was changing that absolute, you know, every tenth of a second counts mentality. So actually, some situations, survival is what counts. Tenths of a second, take them. Have the tenths, have the seconds there. I want to survive this one. Uh, and OJ was the best at it. Okay, he had his issues, but he was, yeah. he was still the best at it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, for sure. When when the shock went, I thought, ah, oh, there he goes, right, and 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 I think at that stage, all the bets started to come out. <laughs> I know, I know, I had some, I had some good money on uh, um, what uh, Katsuta. The, he was definitely one of my favorites, right? Did you? Yes, 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 yes. I put I put money on Katsuta, and I put money on um, on Ford. Um, on Gus, Gus Greensmith. That was my money. And you can ask Patrick. Patrick's my witness because I know Colin was going to get fried because he wasn't giving Katsuta credit on Friday. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 yeah, no, no, no. I think it was more for, for, for the top five because again, coming oh, okay. to, to the to the 18th uh, mindset, right? Katsuta over the past uh, two rallies at least, besides the safari, has been showing tremendous consistency and improvement, right? And if you looked Absolutely. at uh, Gus Greensmith with the uh, with Patterson uh, next to him, the, the Navy, um, and and I actually need to talk to you about that. The word, what was that word that, that Chris Patterson used? <laughs> <laughs> because we we had a uh, we had a laugh over it because I think he used it in one of his third fish videos also afterwards. <laughs> but, but, remind but, me, it, remind me what the word was. Uh, uh, I, I can't remember now, <laughs> but because I was like, what did he say? <laughs> no, listen. Sometimes I don't know what he's saying either. I mean, you know, the navigators. <laughs> apologies, guys, but navigators are from a different world and they speak a different language. You know, it's, it's not always the language I speak. Sorry, lads. <laughs> I don't know about Nico, but I think all of us around the table has, has navigated before. I know Rikers and Patrick, we all have navigated. So, so definitely it's always a benefit when you move from a, a navigator seat to become a driver. Yeah, I've done it once. Nice I've done it once. Never again. Never, ever, ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did navigate my dad for, um, for oh. one little rally in the Classic. It was a short a training rally, but I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to read notes ever again. <laughs> and the worst thing is that that doesn't want to listen, right? He's like, no, nah, I know what I'm doing, but <laughs> yeah, navigating yeah. It, it's a whole other ball game, I think. That, and that's yeah, the one thing that amazes amaze me about the safari. Sorry, Colin, is that in South Africa when we navigate, we go in the valleys, we count. We count down 800, 600, all of that, because sometimes you can't see and you need to have an overlook. When they started to have a discussion about counting on stages, I was like, but but that's how we rally. That, that for me was something different and something new also. Absolutely. And, and that's what the, the better prepared crews would have known about. They, they'd have, you know, they'd have studied African rallying, they'd have known what to expect in the recce. And, and as you say, the big thing for me that was obvious from the recce, Obviously, the surface was interesting with those ruts, but the other thing was the lack of definition in the stages, the lack of uh, you know points within the stage that you could you could refer to in your notes. And and, and you're absolutely right at, at that point when you realise now you don't have a tree there, you don't have a fence or a gate post or a telephone box that you can reference in your notes. Then you've got to start talking about counting down to corners. And it's yeah. again something that you know these guys at the very top level just. It's, it's an art that perhaps they've lost over the years um, and, and they had to reintroduce it and we saw it happening and some of the drivers did, used it well, others not so well. I think the guys on the WRC was very, very spoiled because when you do a normal African Rally Championship, there's just a string of uh, danger tapes uh, like across the, the road, that's it. There's no 100 meter arrows, there's no arrows per se, it's just a piece <laughs> of danger tape. 
and <laughs> yeah, counting yeah. down and using trees as markers or at bush or at anthill. That, that's part of the calls in Africa. So the, the WSC definitely spoiled the guys. Um, so I reckon, actually, let's take some of the arrows away and see these boys read. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah I, do you oh, know what? I, I, totally, <laughs> I, I totally agree with you. And, and you know what? It wasn't so long ago that those all those marker arrows were put up for recce to make sure the drivers went the right way during recce. They were taken down yeah. before the event started. And I, I, I actually asked David about it du during uh, Safari because they were so obvious in Safari, all the markers, because there were so other... As I say, but it's a furniture at the side of the stage. There were so so few others that the the marker posts were were, were obvious that the arrows. Um, we're not quite sure when they they started to leave those arrows in, uh, but I do remember not so long ago a time where all of those arrows, all of those those markers were taken away after the recce, and and the drivers had to rely on their memory and their notes clearly uh, to make sure that they get into the corner at the right time. It's 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 definitely definitely something that you know they, they should look at again. Get rid of them. You know, let's see the, the proper <laughs> skill yes, being reintroduced. A hundred percent agree with you on that. <laughs> but 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 moving on to the Saturday when the rain came, was it the I think the Saturday the rain came, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Again, yeah. that was another new aspect. Uh, Nicole, how did you find driving um, in the rain? Because um, you know, um, what I'll do is I'll put up a picture also just to show you controls of your car. Uh, you must have been a busy guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it does get quite busy when it rains, but uh, I do I do find it more enjoyable when it when it rains. I think it evens the playing field a little bit. Um, it um, you know it's it's more about how you approach the corners, uh, the terrain just changes uh, from from fast. Well, what we did in the morning was very fast paced, and then it's just a sprinkle of rain, and it's it's it was ice because of the black cotton. It's we went off. I think Rick, you guys went off in the same spot. Yeah, we actually um, burned the car somehow. Yeah, you burned the car, yeah. And um, yeah, we were lucky to get away with that. But um, in in the ARC, which was a month before the WRC, we had it uh, We had it worse than this. It was flat out, flat out rain. We did recce in, in the dry, and it there was a, a storm that came through for, for two days, and it was it was sure. literally a swamp and mud. But uh, it does get tiring on the, on the wheel, because you're trying to listen to the navigator, the notes aren't making sense. There's a mud hole or a water splash that was never called up, uh, and yeah, it, it it just makes everything uh, a level playing field. It just I think it makes it more interesting for the fans and and for us too. Well, just sorry, just to sorry interrupt you. There. Most of the guys don't understand what black pen is. They just hear the word. Um, mm. I experienced it two years ago when I did a classic event and. Uh, the best way to describe it, black cotton is the ugly cousin of black ice. It really is exactly <laughs> the, the same as black ice. It's yeah, just more yeah, pretty much. And, and you've, yeah. got, no, you've got, you know, you, you become a passenger with a string on your hand, and it, it's really, yeah, you just sit back and hope for the how best. Does, how does that work? Because, uh, you know, I, I think it was uh, Tanak said that when the rain came down, he braked twice as far from the corner as he had in his notes. And he actually speeded up when he touched the brakes and almost went off on the corner. But how does it work with this black cotton? Because I'd have thought it would have got more gloopy and sticky. But that's not the case, is it? What what, what actually goes on that makes it so slippery? Oh, that's um, what I said. It's the, like black ice. It's all yeah. volcanic dust. But Nicole can explain more. Yeah. It's it's more it's 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 like a clay. It's really when it's when it's dry, it's super, yeah. super mm. hard. As soon as it gets a little bit of water over it, it's literally like it's like clay, it's like sludge. And what happens is, especially when, like, in this, in this particular rally, the rain just came for about, I think, half an hour, if I'm not mistaken. And in, it was in certain patches. So you'll be coming through a long straight and it's dry. And then there's a hairpin right or a, or a slow right or a medium right. And all of a sudden, it's, it's just been coated with a slight... You can see it's damp, but as soon as you tap the brakes... You're 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 off you're off into the you're into passing the in the bush. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Wow. You turn left wow. and right is yeah, they don't want to Yeah. And also what you need to understand is the way it rains in Africa, especially like uh, high altitude, it rains in uh, just like a rounded patch, right in that concentrated area. And with the stage yeah. doing like a, a, a um uh, what do you call it, like a flower 
clover leaf goes out of the patch goes back in the patch goes out the patch goes back in the patch so one second you've got good grip and it is actually biting the next minute you eat this stuff and you just become a passenger it's like yeah <laughs> picture monte carlo black ice you don't see it coming it's just there yeah yeah it's yeah. crazy isn't it and that's that that's what you know it made that last stage on saturday so interesting in that you know, we saw things turning around didn't we because one or two of the drivers had slightly better conditions and then as we went yeah. further into the field the conditions got worse and then they improved a little bit again and yeah. it yeah. just made it we'd had a lot of drama and a lot of incident already and that little bit of rain just gave us that that wee bit of extra drama and you know i had one or two drivers at the end of the rally saying actually you know if we come back at a different time of year that might actually be quite interesting because we might get a whole lot <laughs> more of that rain and i thought it's oh, absolutely nutters why, why would you want any more of that it was, it was so challenging and, and so difficult you know, Zogier basically said yeah come on let's let's, let's come back during the proper wet season mad yeah completely mad <laughs> well if you use the same date as what the equator rally was a month ago then you would really have you can put money down on anyone even all five guys to to actually yeah. win this event because it really is a lottery thing yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what? i i never i never like anything when it's a complete lottery it, partly because i never ever win lotteries ever <laughs> I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't i don't like lotteries but yeah i, I don't know I, I if we had those conditions then we would absolutely have to see a different approach from the drivers and we'd have to see drivers taking more of an interest you know more of an interest in what's happened in the classic safari and safaris of old how to deal with these conditions you know how to go around the mud holes how to spot the mud holes you know where to where to recognize that actually it might look wet but it's actually quite grippy in that section so you can make time there i i, yeah. I think it could be an interesting challenge and it could be quite interesting to see the different approaches of the drivers you're quite right it's always when when you get extreme weather there's always a big big element of luck but i think it would also it would also give us the opportunity to see one or two drivers maybe being again a little more intelligent using a little yeah. more mm. local knowledge to uh, yeah. to work out how to tackle the event yeah yeah well, definitely no for sure so so nico what i was trying to figure out the saturday if, if you look at the picture behind me maybe yeah. just take us through what does each room represent and and how do you operate it simultaneously because we were talking about not breaking and breaking in 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 uh, black cotton how do you then because you know for, for us uh, able bodies we would then basically left foot break or come off the accelerator how, how does this work well um from the picture you can see there's there's uh, there's three rings so the the topmost ring is the is the throttle which i normally press with my thumb on my palm um obviously the center ring is the is the steering wheel and and the, the the ring right at the bottom is is the brake which which you kind of need to to pull up. So I normally use two hands. Uh, one one hand is normally on depending on the corner I'm approaching would be either on the throttle or on the brake. So I can technically left foot or left hand or whatever you want to call it, but I I do left foot brake with uh, with that. So I mean they're both independent. So you can use the brake and the throttle together at any given point as well. Yeah. But yeah, it's it does get a bit confusing if the uh, first time sitting around, yeah. But it's something I guess is second nature now. That that's amazing, eh? Because nevertheless, trying to figure out how to drive in black cotton with being able body, how do you steer that <laughs> through, through black cotton? <laughs> yeah. Now it's, it is it is a challenge. Yeah. How sensitive is your is your throttle and and your brake? You know, are you able to progressively? apply throttle progressively break or is it is it pretty does it require a lot of force from your, your thumbs or how does it work with the throttle and the brake in terms of the sensitivity um yeah so so the throttle is uh, it's it's all mechanical so um it's it's uh, directly linked to the pedal to the floor so it's it's literally how much you press and how much gas you're going to get so it it is it's not as soft as you would think it would be the throttle um but the brake is quite soft because it it has a hydraulic system that pushes the pedal down. So I do have a little knob on the side where I can adjust how hard I want to want to press the brakes. So it is very responsive as to how much you want to step on the brake or step on the gas. Yeah. So yeah, it's very, very, um, very progressive. Yes. Yeah. 
Very impressive. Very impressive indeed. Jeez. Yeah, well done. Yeah, Cheers. That, Thank you. It's very cool, man. Very cool. Um, Patrick, do you have any questions? No. I've left you to carry on because you seem to have all the enthusiasm tonight. <laughs> so, so, sorry, Patrick. I apologize. That's normally your job. <laughs> no, I, love, I, 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 I could listen to these guys all night because it is so interesting. It, it, it's, it's breaking new ground as far as rallying is concerned again in Africa. I had a privilege to chat to, to Hendrik a little while ago. Um, first had to figure out who Hendrik was, as he said. But um, <laughs> now that we know it's Rikus, um, we don't know whether we can believe him anymore, but no, I'm only joking. <laughs> Rikus, uh, I would love to touch it on with, on with you again, because from a South African perspective, uh, if you could make a comparison between what we know in the current national championship and what you experienced in the WRC now, as far as the whole vibe around this rally is concerned, because um, if you look at the excitement column there in England, uh, it must have been absolutely almost mind-bending to go into Kenya itself and experience it, it, it live. Look, uh, Patrick, I'll tell you one thing. Um, I've been to a few events, um, not world rallies before, but I've been to a few events, and I've never in my life seen the locals being as enthusiastic as these guys, they were literally parking on the side of the highway with cooler boxes, looking at the cars, just driving past in transport section. I've never seen this in my life before. Um, that's just to give you the idea. Uh, the transport section from stage one back to Navasha, it's about 100 kilometers, give or take. 80 kilometers of the 100 kilometers, the people were standing five deep. I mean, think about this, 80 kilometers of people standing five deep. It is a, an enormous task. If, if it wasn't for the army to control these people with their little batons, clapping the people, literally. If they try and run to her, they beat the hell out of it. Um, it is surreal to, to witness this. Uh, I've never seen this. Um, just the atmosphere of the whole safari is electric. You know you're going to something big, but once you arrive there and you see the people standing on the foot bridges over the freeways, uh, just wanting to see the cars. They don't even want to see them race. They just want to see the cars. I've had people when we're stuck in the traffic, uh, jumping off border borders, which is the local motorcycles that they use as taxis, and people taking selfies with the car. Um, we've had people jumping on our bonnet taking selfies uh, <laughs> of the car while we're standing stationary. It's just crazy, man. Um, but from, from an administrative point of view, uh, it's very similar to our national series. Uh, it's, it's on par what we do down here. But um, we cannot by any means uh, down here in South Africa compete with enthusiasm from the locals. It's just surreal. I've never seen something like this. Well, I tell you what, I, I've never seen, I've never seen anything like it anywhere, anywhere, anywhere <laughs> in the world. That, that, that 90, 100 or so kilometers that you described from the first stage back to the Naivasha, some of the footage that we saw from there still makes the hair stand up on the back of my neck. You know, there's a section where I think the cars, I thought the convoy was fantastic. It was a great idea, really great idea. Yeah. When they came through that section, through a town, and the school kids were there and screaming, I think it was when Robin Ferrer was going past. It was just, it was sensational. It was just, it was joyous. It was absolutely joyous to see so many people out on the road sections. As you say, just to see the cars. They just wanted to be part of it and see the cars. And for, for me, that would be my absolute abiding memory of you know, the safaris return to the championship was mm. the reception that the locals gave to the whole thing and, and the way they embraced it and and the joy, the happiness, the excitement that they that they added to the event. You know, you just won't get anything like that anywhere else in the world. And it's it's something that, you know, the safari is unique. It's unique in its challenge, but it's unique in the atmosphere that it created around the championship. Yeah, and, and the local people, yeah. the people of Kenya, you were the ones that created that and you have to take your hat off to them they were just up, they were uplifting they were they, they put a smile on your face just watching youtube and anyone that can put a smile on my face watching youtube hats off hats off you guys it was a great job really great and, and, and it'll stay with you those sorts of things stay with you forever just watching those moments stay with you yeah yeah i tell you one thing 
if ever I go back to Kenya for WRC, it has to be in a rally car because there's two things that got right of right of way in Kenya. It's wild animals and rally cars. They just open up like the Sea of Moses or something when yeah. they see rally cars coming. And then as soon as the cars pass, it's back into a gridlock. You cannot explain this. <laughs> that, that's, that's interesting. Because my, my friend George Donaldson, who worked with us, George, you guys might know George. He um, yeah. he was the team manager at, at Toyota for years. He was a sporting director at Subaru. Uh, he has Africa in his heart because he was out there, I think, this time for the, his 20th safari. But he was pulling his hair out by the end of this one because of the traffic. I had him on the phone. I said, go on, I'm stuck in traffic. I've done 900 meters in two hours. I just can't stand it. I can't stand it. I said, George, just chill out. Get a motorbike, walk. I think next year we're getting a rally car. We're getting a rally car to drive around in and pretend. Maybe, yeah. maybe that old Subaru that ended up in the scrapyard that's been welded back yeah. together. Yeah, 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 I'm going to get that one. Slap a few Snickers on it and just go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dear. Fabulous. Fabulous. But boys, do you know what? I am really sorry. I am going to have to leave you. I, I, I might, I'm, on, I'm on a time limit on this one. And I am going to. I've enjoyed our 40 minutes way, way too much, but I am going to have to leave you very, very shortly. That, that's fine, Colin. Thank you. You you did you uh, apologize for indicate to us uh, prior. So we, we really enjoyed your company and, and we thank you for, for joining us. But definitely it won't be the last time, right? Uh, anytime. Anytime, guys. It's been a joy. And I, I am uh, I am the biggest fan now of African rallying and I just want more. I want more of it. So anytime <laughs> you want to talk to me, just give me a shout and I'll, I'll be delighted to come along and um, talk a little more nonsense with you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. So, if we talk about people jumping on bonnets, right? There's a YouTube clip going around for of, of Raji where a guy literally <laughs> just jumped onto his bonnet. Did, did yeah. it happen to you also, Nicole? When I saw that, I was so amazed. Man, I, I actually thought uh, when we came when we came out of the, the, the ceremonial start and we went on to the highway, I actually thought that uh, there was a riot that started <laughs> because normally that that patch is it is known for the university uh, kids you know uh, starting up you know s stone throwing and all that kind of nonsense. So I was kind of uh, hesitant to to go any f uh, further from there, but uh, I saw another rally car in front. I'm like, these are just. The fans and yeah, I, I you know I put my hand out to slap a few hands and I thought if I leave my hand out anymore, it's probably going to get stolen or broken because <laughs> they were they were they were crazy. They were crazy I've never seen it. I, I, I was seriously expecting yeah. someone to start opening the back doors and climbing in. It was that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if we if we were stationary any longer than that, yeah, for sure we, we would have a few yeah, people for sure. in the back. We yeah, actually had a few. We actually a few guys asking, "Can I hop in and take a?" Take a spin with us. Like, there's no seat. Sorry, buddy. Next time. You know? <laughs> Jump into the car. <laughs> so, yeah. but, but maybe take us through what was the experiences of, of your team members? You know, I've I put the picture up of, of Rikis's team. Um, how was it to, to participate with a, a team from Kenya, Rikis and, and Nicola? How did your team experience and who does your team consist out of? Okay, I'll, well, I'll, I'll let, I'll uh, let Rikis go. Yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. So in the background, uh, we've got the guys. Uh, we were literally slapped together within three weeks. Um, three weeks prior to the safari, uh, Dil Raj, the driver, decided he wants to do the rally, uh, give or take three weeks. And all of a sudden, we had to make do with teams on all over. We couldn't get guys in from England to help out as per normal because they need to go back and into a two-week lockdown. So um, on the picture, you can see is Dil Raj there, Giuseppe. Uh, he's from Italy. Galette is uh, local-based. Um, uh, Giuseppe is the one with a nice shaved face there. Uh, Khaled is local Kenyan. Uh, Jesse in the middle there with the turban. He's actually the, 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 the um, 2015 ARC champion. He, he took the role of our team manager. Uh, Jesse is quite quick. Uh, so he was really instrumental in helping us getting the car ready and set up and tested. And then um, we've got our son. We've got JB there. Uh, in the back is Hamrush, and then on the right is Eli. He flew in from Lebanon. So we all the team, obviously myself from South Africa, and we got slapped together the Thursday, the week prior to the rally, and that's how we met, and that's how we started rolling. So.
uh, it's a really international team and it was super fun joyful uh, everyone had fun that, that's the key why we enjoyed this event yeah. well, that's amazing and nickel did you also put the team together in a week <laughs> uh, <but> no. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky, luckily we, we no we we um i mean we have a we have a team that's been uh it's been with uh, it's been with me for uh a few good years so it consists of uh of my team manager tino khan he's been he's used to uh, navigate uh i think he was a test navigator for richard burns once uh miyoshi used to navigate for miyoshi uh so he's he's very familiar with with our terrain especially how it used to be in the old days. Uh, I've got my local voice um, for my mechanics. And then I've got my, my, my dad, who's um, my, he's an ex-rally driver, but uh, now he's role of uh, team principal now. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, we, awesome. yeah, they, all had, they all had an awesome time. Um, yeah, we just, just lots of uh, good banter and uh, yeah, good fun. Mikhail, if I may, um... First of all, hats off to what your attitude and, and the way you go about doing your sport despite your handicap. I really admire that in, in anybody, and I think you deserve a, a, a round of applause for, for achieving what you are. Um, Thank you. But at the back of it, I would, if I might ask a personal question, I'd like you to put us in the picture as to um, were you an able driver before or? If, or did you start rallying in your current condition? Um, okay, I, I have I haven't raced um, when I, before my accident. I I used to take my my father's rally car out uh, when he was testing. So I would I would be I was familiar with how to drive on on our terrain, but I never actually competed because I was still in university, uh, still doing my studies. Uh, I only used to take part in four by four challenges. You know the um, the slow-paced 4x4 vehicles where you climb up hills and uh, the technical driving stuff. Um, but after my injury, which was from a, a quad bike accident when uh, one of the training rallies for an endurance race, uh, when I got back is when I started uh, trying to get back into motorsports and rallying has always been a, a passion of mine. And uh, yeah, so that's that's how where we are now. <laughs> Good choice. Good choice. It's amazing. <laughs> amazing. Thanks. Uh, and, and do you? Uh, it's going to sound a silly question now, but your your fellow competitors, um, your the way they approach you as a as a fellow competitor, I would imagine that um, at home it's a pretty well known fact. To us, it was quite a surprise to eventually learn that, that you have a disability because it doesn't show from the outside when you drive the car and um, that in itself is a, is a, is a compliment but um, it's, it's amazing to think somebody would take up the toughest rally in the world um, and you, you, you sound very positive and smiling about it afterwards you, you want another 20 to come <laughs> yeah 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 um I mean, yeah, uh, when I first started off, the first rally I did, uh, I didn't actually, I didn't tell anybody that, um, well, nobody knew I was in a wheelchair until I actually uh, drove off the finish line. Uh, that's when, you know, the media came through and started publicizing uh, me being in a wheelchair and rallying and stuff. Um, I've never I've never used my disability as, as a, dis to, to portray it as a disadvantage. And the fact that my competitors um, you know, they they, they uh, treat me as their equals. I think that's the main thing. Where um, uh, you know, once you're in the car, it's it's a machine at the end of the day. Whether you drive with your feet, whether you drive with your hands, uh, I guess it's just how you tackle the road. Yeah. <laughs> and and little challenges like changing a wheel uh, get guaranteed your navigator works harder than mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, I, I have to interject that I have to do all the work myself as well. <laughs> so I've I've actually bought the brand new brand new jack for my for my uh, navigator just from from uh, from M Sport when they were there when they were down they they were selling a few parts so. I did, you know, I did him a solid, you know, it's a, it's a three pump jack, so yeah, it should be fine. It should be okay. I'll find the tools. 
<laughs> but no, I, I try to be very cautious. I try to be very cautious because it does take us much longer to change a, a tire, especially in this stage. Yeah, it does take him a good uh, about eight minutes. Eight, yeah, so it, uh, I, tr- I try and avoid as much as I can. Uh, I think we've only had one puncture, which was unfortunate. It was uh, it was at the start of the stage, and yeah, it was something we couldn't get past. But uh, I know he hates me for it, and when we do get a puncture, but it's out of my control. I just sit there and I'm just like, oh, "Man, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up!" Hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so slow? Yeah, the clock. Exactly. Oh, well, 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 you just, you yes. just burned you guys because you said you only had one puncture on the safari rally and you guys can all tell you up uh, truckloads of them. <laughs> uh, look, so so, no, so where's the problem? We only yeah, had no. one, one puncture, but we put our car on the side. That, that's my excuse. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So and, and there's no secret about it. it was my side of the car in case someone was wondering. <laughs> yeah. well, that's inevitable. It's always on navigator side. I think even <laughs> Mattel would agree with it. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We actually have some 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 cool comments here from the audience also. Um, we have a, a shout out from Samir Yusuf. Um, I think he's also Kenyan. Uh, yeah, I've, I think yeah. I've interacted with him already. Um, yeah. Ashes, Jagger, great drive, Nicole, and congrats once again on the finish for the safari. And then there's um, Baderu. Um, okay, Baderu is putting up the comments there. And then um, Rika's Bart asks if you guys work together at CAE in, yeah, yeah, in that's me. That, yeah, that was the time yeah, of the yeah, after we studied together, right? And you yeah. and me. So um, there's a story behind this part, and now we also worked together a few years ago. <laughs> so there's a, there's a golden thread here. <laughs> we even studied together. What do you mean? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's, there's more comments here. Uh, Byron, can you put the one up of uh, Suvir? Um, yeah, there's also quite a cool one. Uh, the Safari Rally used to be part of the Kenyan culture growing up. And that's a true way. Eh? Rally is part of the culture, they definitely. Um, I also and, agree, there's no replacement for Kenya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, for sure. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think that actually takes us into to the section what is the future? We know the Safari, um, the, well, the Legends of the Classic is coming up. Uh, Nicola, I, I know Rikas is, is back there. You mentioned earlier, are you going to be doing it? Uh, we, we did have some talks that I might be navigating somebody, but, um, I don't know. It's still, it's still on the drawing board, but I will be definitely be, um, spectating. So you'll find me up in, up in the middle of nowhere <laughs> watching you guys. <laughs> Hopefully off of Nairobi won't be there again. <laughs> no, 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 it's just the crazy ones that'll be up there. So I'll, I'll be one of me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Rikas, what are you, are you going to be, are you navigating driving? Uh, I'll more than likely be navigating for Megan Belak in a golf one again. Okay, that's oh, cool. Nice. Uh, we, we just have to up, do something different because everyone is either in the Beetle, the, the Porsches, or uh, in uh, what, what's the other cars that's normally there? It's the Datsun. So we yeah, just going to be different. Yeah, yeah. 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 Because make a comparison between the WRC and the Classic for me. Um, at my age, you can appreciate that I enjoy the classic more to a certain degree. Um, those cars are something else. Uh, it, it's reviving yeah, a, 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 a lost time in, in rallying. But the drivers that are coming out for the classic certainly don't hang around. They might have grown a few grey hairs or lost a few hairs, but they certainly pedal when they go on the classic rally. They're not playing the fool there. And no, not at all. No. It's fantastic to see those old cars at full top. Um, so if, now I'm going to I'm going to be a, a, a dirty one on your side. Which one do you choose? The the, the classic rally or the WRC? I suppose there's an attraction in both. Um, my answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. There's, there's no good choice. <laughs> Um, uh, tell you one thing, uh, the, the biggest difference is to, to just let everyone understand as well. Uh, I think it was three or four years ago, 
they started allowing power steering in the classic cars again. So that, that also tells you something about the caliber of the drivers. They're getting to the age where they need power steering now. It's definitely, it's, it's something to witness, to see a, a, a six-cylinder beetle going down the, the straights and taking jumps to max <laughs> as if it's... Um, as if it's a WRC car, the, the Oaks are just really committed, and I love seeing that. Uh, they just sound awesome. The BDA Escort or BDG engines, um, with the Datsuns with the carburetors, uh, it's just something magical to see, man. It's it's awesome. Yeah. And 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 Mr. BDG or Escort has just arrived. Are you, Raji? <laughs> hey, how are you guys doing? Hey, Raji, Good. what's up? Good, thanks, man. I'm, I'm really sorry that I didn't make it on time. I just got back off a safari. You're just in time to be late. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the problem. We fully understand. I, I, told, I told Clint he's from South Africa. I said, I'll be 15 minutes, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, don't let me uh, we... you guys carry on. No, no, no. Uh, I know Patrick yeah, just talking would about the love classic. to chip. Well, exactly, well, the classic since, is. Yeah. Since, since, since he comes onto the program late, he's going to be the one talking most of the day. He's going to put us in the picket uh, <laughs> from, from his perspective. Yeah, I mean, um, sorry, because I just joined, I, I, I heard the last bit of that about us, uh, us little boys of this generation needing power steering, so I, I'm not sure where to go with that. <laughs> 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 to, to be fair, I, I, I didn't I haven't done any of the classics with power steering. I just fitted it last year and ever since I fitted it, COVID stopped me doing for a rally with it. So so I haven't managed to test it on a classic. Well I, I threw the, the stone in the bush and I said make a choice between classic and, and modern WRC and Rika said yes to both. So if you if you faced with that same question, which would you prefer? Uh, you know, it's a it's a really difficult question, but I've obviously had to face it very um, really in my life this year. Um, I, I think it's a, or if I can if I can speak for myself, I think it's a matter of of where you are in your life. Um, I uh, I mean, not many people that are on the shore or yourselves will know, but I, you know, I, I rallied competitively and then I. For, for financial reasons, pulled away from it. And then I decided, well, you know, if I could do one rally a year and do, you know, proper sort of nine, eight day rallying and do what my dad and my grandfather and everybody did and what I, I grew up watching and what I fell in love with, that's what I want to do. Um, and you you absolutely fall in love with it. And, you know, you wake up every day and you've done 500 kilometers and you know you've got another five, 600 kilometers ahead of you. and you finish that day and you've got another seven days ahead of you of it and it's it's stunning but at the end of the day especially my generation that grew up in the 80s you know we grew up with the world rally championship around us um my generation was carlos and tommy and colin and marku and yoha um and no matter no matter what you say about the fact that you say well it's modern day rallying versus classic rallying at the end of the day, the World Rally Championship is the World Rally Championship. It's what we all wanted to do. It's it's why we fell in in love with rallying. I think, I think Nikhil will attest to that as well. Is we all, we all from our generation want to do classic. We all know that it's more fun, that it's longer, that you know you can do a stage longer than it takes your brakes to heat up and all that kind of stuff. But. Um, <laughs> But at the end of the day, that raw pace of modern rallying gives you a serious adrenaline hit. It really, really gets you going. Um, and uh, being around being around world champions and everything, I think everybody in their life has to do it once. And not many people get the chance. I mean, I am in incredibly blessed to have had that chance. And I thank God and the universe for that. Nikhil, the same. I know he. we had many chats during the... WRC just being part of it, it was super, super special. So it's very hard to choose from it from a life perspective. Um, I think what my focus would be right now, if I could manage it, is to do as much modern rallying and WRC rallying as I can, um, because I, I assume that I'll live another 30, 40 years and I can do some more classics. But I don't think I'll, 
I don't think I'll have the pace in about 10 years to be with these guys in the modern life. So. <laughs> what, what, what if the WRC present to Kenya now, other than just being a fantastic event, what does it mean for a youngster looking at you guys as, as their heroes in Kenya? Uh, and, and, and how will that motivate them to, to stay involved in this sport, or get involved in this sport now? I think I, I talked for five minutes, so I'll let Nickel take that one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for the, I mean, for the WRC to come back, I mean, it's 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 um, it's brought so many people, you know, back to our country. It's brought back tourism, you know, especially in this time of COVID and stuff. It's uh, it's a real game changer. Um, but for future generations, I mean, you've seen, you probably were following the the rally three cars from. Uh, from the WRC, uh, FIA, uh, junior junior guys, you know they they were awarded a car for the for the youngsters, and I mean they're the future of rallying now. Um, I'm pretty sure in a couple of years they'll be up in R fives and um, you know pushing along. I mean those cars are pretty, you know they're they're built for racing, and for them to have the opportunity to drive those cars right now, um, I'm sure it's a big stepping stone for them uh, into future rallying, and hopefully. With their talent, they're able to get into the world, you know, the world category where they're not just driving Kenya, they're driving Finland, you know, Great Britain. Uh, it would be amazing to see them up there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't know so how you can be so, so negative about age here because you had a 91 year old <laughs> competing in this event. And he actually made the finish. And he's talking about coming back at the age of 100. So, <laughs> yeah. The world is an oyster, guys. Age is just a number. Yeah, it is. It, it definitely is. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, that old man really drove his heart out, man. I, I, I really felt for him when he got stuck in the at Hell's Gate. When I heard he was stuck, it was oh man, I was, yeah, I was gutted. I'm really gutted. I mean, yeah, he, he drove full it. marks yeah. to that guy. Yeah, full marks. Yeah. 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 He's, uh, when I when I, yeah, I don't. Ah, oh, man, he was. Yeah, I really thought he would finish and. Uh, because he, yeah. he was he was motoring along really nicely. But, yeah, I uh, remember so Nikhil. Just... Every every service would come. I mean, eventually days would come up. Drive in. I was like, hey, he's still going, man. He's still going. And <laughs> I mean, what a what a lovely guy. Yeah, huh? what a lovely guy. Yeah, what a lovely guy. yeah. yeah. Um, it was it was pretty amazing. Yeah, but as you said, yeah, age is age is just the number. I guess uh, it's all down to the heart, man. Um, it's it's a bug that never leaves, I guess. <laughs> end of the day, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, it's, it's, not, day, it's, it's not the trophy yes. on, on on the mental piece. It's, it's the experience that counts. It's what to take with you, and yeah. that is something nobody can ever replace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most definitely, yeah. I, mean, so I, guess, like I can also for, just to add. I just want to just add. To add I just to want to what, no, sorry. Uh, I just want to add something here quickly. Um, the WRC in Africa has brought so much more to our continent than just a, a single event over a weekend. I mean, there's rejuvenated um, fire from everyone that wants to go do the next year's safari. I mean, from South, from Zambia, from everywhere. And I think that's, that's a big catalyst that's going to just fire up rallying in Africa again. And it's, yeah. it's massive. It's bigger than what we all think it's going to be. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. It, it's huge. I mean, from a from a Kenyan perspective, and you know, I'm I'm uh, as you can see from my hair, I'm a bit older than Nikhil. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and it's the past hearing. Yeah, it's because uh, <laughs> I'm always stressed. I'm always giving you one of these. So, <laughs> um, yeah, but you know, I, you know, I was unluckily one of that generation. I was born. So luckily, unluckily, I was born in 82 and I went through the beautiful years of the WRC. I mean, everybody has their beautiful years, but, you know, I got to watch some Group B cars. I got to watch the early Group A cars. I watched what I got to watch the Group 4 cars, the two wheel drive Group Bs, the, you know, from the 240s and the 037s to all of that stuff. And then the evolution into the WRC and everything. And my entire life was built around one day I'm going to do the WRC. And then when I was when I was old enough, we lost the WRC. Um, mm -hmm. And then I spent my entire rallying career, or the normal rallying career, sort of, you know, on the outskirts of it, Kenya Nationals and all of that. And then 
theoretically in terms of where you can go in your life some guys are proving us wrong but you know if you if you don't have the funds and you can't stay inside the tent you you sort of you lose touch with it um what nikhil was saying earlier is so poignant is you know the the young guys in kenya right now i don't know how blessed how whether they actually know how blessed they are yeah i mean my my generation i don't know how many kids are on this uh, chat but my generation got effed in a really major way because we lost everything that we dreamt about absolutely everything that we dreamt about um and this generation they you know they in their early 20s and world champions are here and there's six more years of the world championship and social media and sponsors and everything what this is doing for kenya for east africa for south africa for zimbabwe for zambia for madagascar for every rallying country in this continent is huge it's 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 on it, you can't believe forget the tourism forget all of that look at the amount of sponsors that have come out of the woodwork look at the amount of people that are buying cars look at the amount of spares mechanics everything it it's just blown up the industry completely and 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 next year is going to be even worse i mean you're you're getting an entry in next year safari is going to be like is that going to be like <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going to yeah. be super difficult to get an entry next year i mean yeah. i manage as somebody that in all intents and purposes you know nikhil should have been on in front of the line in me in terms of rallying the guy's been rallying he's had incredible results he's you know he's he's a hero of kenyan rallying right now i haven't rallied for 5 years i was really lucky to get an entry next year if i don't stay in the sport yeah i won't i won't be in the entry list because people with modern cars and and the investments will will get those entry lists and that's how competitive it's going to be next year yeah, most definitely Yeah. I think the interest was cut off at fifteen inches this year. Sixty something, wasn't it, Nickel? It was. Uh, I think the final entry was fifty-eight. Fifty-eight. And yeah. then obviously, obviously, with all the the strict scrutineering and and non-eligible <laughs> yeah, cars. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't want to touch on that because this is a very touchy subject. I saw some <laughs> some <laughs> some people that had to go home. Or, Sit on the sideline watching the start. It was that was sad. Yeah, was sad. yeah, yeah. I think okay. I think most of the guys, except for maybe two or three cars, didn't make the start. The rest was uh, registered as nationals, K and R C. Yeah. Um, so yeah. the guys who originally was on the W C list got removed from the W C list, not recognized as being part of the W C, but yeah. they still competed on the same road, same conditions, just as K N R C uh, competitors. Yeah. 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 Supplementary class uh, through the K N R C. Yeah. Yeah. So because what is still awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which was a pity because if I knew that to begin with I would have just entered my Ford. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. if, if I knew that all I had to do was fail scrutinizing I'm bloody good at that. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. Oh yeah yeah. Because do you see the same effect in South African motorsport? with Kenya coming back is it going to be the incentive we need is to to get a boost in local rallying again and we've already got guy bottle being the African rally championship i can only see more people wanting to do this event next year and i'm sure um, while being in Kenya now you must have bumped into a few South Africans just quietly having a look at this uh Bum being the operative word there, I did see South African uh, support out there in the, in the stations. Uh, I've got a photo, but I don't think it's... Does it, no, it's not appropriate. It's PG-rated. It's PG-rated. <laughs> uh, no, but definitely, um, it, it, this could just be the catalyst that we also need to get the fire started for South Africans to start kick-starting our, our sport up again. Um, if not just for WRC but for ARC as well i just got a message today that there's a new incentive from Hyundai Motorsport for the next 3 years yeah. that uh through ARC and different various FIA championships uh, the guys will have like similar to what the Pirelli Star drive used to be with the Mitsubishi Evo 10s initially with um i think Karen Patel was part of that group uh, we had John Williams being John part Williams. of the group Oitanak was yeah. part of the group 
Um, so Hyundai is starting something very similar now at the moment, and there's definitely incentive for the guys out there to actually start dreaming again. Uh, and it's just a case of investing into the sport again. Um, uh, another question I've been asked is uh, whether South Africa is still worthy uh, of hosting the W7. I think worthy is a very strong word to use because it feels, it sounds like we're entitled that we must have it. It's not the case. We could be a, 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 a sub to Kenya, have another round of WRC in Africa, in South Africa, but you can never replace the safari. The safari has got a unique flavor and, uh, attached to it. And what's really interesting is the Saturday was a much more faster flowing uh, stages. It was not yeah. as harsh as the Friday and the Sunday. And some of the WRC crews actually bemoaned and said, take these European top stages out of it and put back the rough stages. So they want all three, four days to be rough as hell. Sure. So that's that's really interesting. Yeah, I'm not so sure they want that. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> Look, I think it's good for social media. Yeah, uh, yeah I, no, I, I felt the, the the shots in my back and in my bones in that uh, fresh, fresh when you hit a rock or something in there. You don't see it; you just feel it. And it's like, yeah, man, it's it's crazy stuff. Uh, we bent our steering on the very first stage on Friday morning. And we don't even know what we eat. We just know it. that's a bad. It's bent. Uh, yeah. You go through like the smoothest piece of sand that you've ever seen in your life, and there's a piece of Africa stuck in it. Yeah, somewhere. <laughs> a piece of the Rift Valley just sticking yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, gnarly, man. They're just gnarly. Like little that's crocodiles the, hiding. That, that's the word that I was trying to get to that uh, Chris Patterson used gnarly. <laughs> he said gnarly. to cousin Don that, that I wanted to tell Colin. Oh, where does that come write from? It, write it down. <laughs> gnarly is I said to him that that's my word from the rally. <laughs> gnarly. No, it's just a little crocodile hiding that's ready to bite you. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> no, for sure, guys. The, the, tonight was, was a, a very good chat. Um, we over the hour already. Um, we really appreciate you, your time and your effort. Um, maybe just Roger, going around another 50 minutes ago, another 50 yeah. minutes. <laughs> 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 I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys would maybe like to say a thank you to your sponsors and to your team. Um, I know Raju also put his team together maybe two or three days before the event. Um, and, and, and Rikas already said this was a, a week before the event. So uh, please go for it. The floor is yours. Yeah, just from my side, I just want to say a big thanks out to the Chatty group, uh, the whole family who was very welcoming, mm -hmm. entertaining me and making sure I've, I've got a, a very good place home away from home. And uh, yeah, it was just a fantastic experience on my side. And uh, thank you to everyone out there, to all the competitors. I mean, you guys were just super awesome having a chat there between stages. Uh, it, it makes it another it family. It's, it's a new family. Yeah. 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 That was good. It was good fun. Mate. Yeah. yeah. Most definitely. <laughs> Can't wait to do it again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what I what, what I have to compliment you guys on is, is certainly the fact that this is let, let's forget about the fact that there's ever been a safari. This could be considered the first safari, and I'm, I'm a, I honestly believe that there's nothing that ever replaces the first of anything. And you guys were there for the return of the safari, so let's yeah, consider yeah. this the first of the safari. And yeah. whatever position you finish in, all of you have the right to consider that to be a winning position. And yeah. from our perspective, as onlookers, as supporters, reporters, whatever you want to call it, that's all for you all. I think you all deserve to go home and feel proud of your achievements. And it's fantastic to see this event back on the calendar. Yeah. Thank, yeah, you, thank you, Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> now for the, for the next event. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I see uh, Guruviri saying hi to everybody here also on, on the chat. Um, so I, th I think uh, we, we need to acknowledge that also. And, and most definitely to the organizers of the event, right? Um, the, the COCs, the, um, everybody behind the scenes, the photographers. I've seen some epic pictures um, in terms of the cars, but also how... Uh, very expensive cameras went through the dust and through the mud. Um, 
And, and I think one of the most uh, capturing pictures was when uh, Thierry Naval was sitting uh, six gear, <laughs> seven or eight thousand RPM in the giraffe is standing on the side of the road. <laughs> and he is just saying, how's it? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so definitely compliments to the organizers also. And, and I think uh, thank you to everybody that has welcomed all of us as, as rallyers into Kenya, back into Kenya. And has opened up the event to, to the continent also. I think that's also very important to mention that. So, yeah, thank you. And then um, until we meet next time again, and have a good evening. And thank you again for your time. And, and Raji, thanks. I hope we didn't rush you too much. And Nico yeah. also. And, and because until we see you again um, sometime around here in Cape Town or in PE. <laughs> Possibly anyway, yeah. No, okay, no, so perfect. Okay. Okay. I'm going to my hand up and straight. When the fight started, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, just a, a laughing joke. They use my passport name, so no one knows my passport name. So the whole of South Africa was confused. Who is this guy entering with a South African entry? Who's this new guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but also, I just want to convey also a big thanks to everyone that pushed hard to get the, the safari back on the calendar. Um, all the organizers, uh, and, uh, like guys like Gooby and Ian Campbell, they, they did tremendous jobs in the background to get this event up and running. And uh, yeah, it's just phenomenal to see the event back, and I'm very grateful. Yeah, super. Now they, so, I mean, even even from uh, I'm sure Nickel will will uh, echo these sentiments. For for us, it's a uh, complete dream for me it's something i never thought i'd be part of in my life so everybody that from you know goofy uh, and phineas and the entire team everybody behind them everybody that believed um i know at the beginning um, a very dear uncle of ours mr soin that would put in a lot of effort um you know they 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 brought back something that we all just love and not just us in kenya everybody across africa and as we saw with the number of people that they had viewing across the world i mean 800 million plus i mean wow. that's just ridiculous it's, it's just <laughs> um, <yeah. laughs> I mean, maybe 10 of those were fans of mine and the the other 900 <laughs> <laughs> and those those 10 were probably my wife logging in 10 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just look at what you know they they put on and kudos kudos to them because without them this couldn't have happened so a big big thank you to them and and thank you to everybody from around the world that supported it and watched it and and you guys for you know organizing even just this chat you know it just shows two and a half weeks three weeks later whatever it is guys are still talking about it can't stop getting enough information want to hear stories um, and I think this is going to be the case until the next safari rally. I think it's just going to be mm -hmm. brilliant. No, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Okay, thanks, guys. Have a good evening, and until we see each other again next time. And thank you to the audience also that participated. We really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, and keep watching. Uh, we'll be back. Uh, Patrick and I will be back in two weeks' time again. Um, but next week oh, it will no. be our co-host um, Abdul and Byron. Thanks, everybody. Good evening. Cool. Thanks for having me. Bye bye. bye. bye.